One of the most important skills that you need to have as a salesperson is the ability to handle objections. I'd like you to start to think about shifting what you believe about objections. And we want to shift away from the idea that objections are really objections. Often what they are, are statements. And they're not things that we need to overcome. If you keep thinking about having to overcome an objection, you're gonna create an environment that could be quite adversarial. Instead, you wanna create an environment where your prospect feels understood and they feel completely comfortable telling you the truth so that you spend less time chasing them or chasing the sin. If we can get to the truth, then we can help the person that we're trying to help. And so what you're often going to find is that when these so-called objections come up, they're not really the truth. It's just that the prospect doesn't want to tell you the truth because they feel embarrassed to tell you the real reason. Perhaps they even feel that it's going to cause you to lose some face. So let's start with the most common objection that you're going to get as a salesperson. And that is when the prospect says to you, I need to think about it. What's the best way for you to respond to this state? First, it's always good just to pause and then simply say, sure, no problem. Most people do need to think about it. If I could just ask though, for you personally, which part do you need to think about? So let's imagine that your prospect comes back with, well, it's the price. Well, thank you for telling me that. When you say it's the price, what do you mean specifically? Would I be correct to say that if the price were lower, then you'd be ready to move forward today? Well, here's another very common objection related to price. You might have a prospect who perhaps even right at the beginning of your call with them asks, what is this going to cost? So how do you respond to that? Well, what a lot of salespeople do is they try to justify the cost of their product or they try to avoid talking about price, but you could just say something like this. I get the feeling that price is going to be the only factor that you take into consideration when making the decision. Is that the case here? And your prospect might say, well, no, no, it won't be the main factor, but it will be a factor. So then you can come back with, well, other than price, then what are the other factors that you're going to be taking into consideration? And that could include things like deliverability, timeline, scope, etc. But now you've put the onus on your prospect to tell you what's really behind that statement. Remember, they asked, what's this going to cost? They didn't say that they don't have a budget. They didn't say that they can't afford to buy anything. They simply asked you a question about what it's going to cost. Now, when you ask, I get the feeling that price is going to be the only factor that you're going to take into consideration when making the decision. Is that the case here? And they say, yes. What do you say to that? You could come back with, well, we're probably going to have a problem because I know for a fact that we're not the cheapest in the market for what we do. And if you're telling me you're only going to buy on price, there's no point in us to continue our conversation. After all, I don't want to waste your time. It's valuable and I certainly don't want to waste mine. A lot of salespeople are scared to do this because in their mind, they think that they're going to lose the sale, but you don't have the sale. You've got nothing to lose. You need to detach yourself emotionally from the outcome. If it turns out that you've got a prospect, and there are prospects like that, who are only going to buy based on price, they only want the cheapest solution, then that's not for you. And that's fine. There are people that buy that way, and they certainly have the freedom to do that. We're not going to prevent them from doing that, but I'm assuming that whatever you're selling, for instance, if you're a coach or a trainer or you're in the medical device industries, you're not going to sell strictly based on price. Now, what do you do if you got through your sales meeting and all of a sudden the person says to you, wow, it's very expensive. You can simply come back with, hey, when you say it's expensive, what do you mean? And your prospect might say, well, I met with XYZ company and they can deliver something very similar to what you're doing, but it's about $1,500 less than what you're charging. Do you see the real objection is that they met with XYZ company and XYZ company gave them a proposal that price wise, 
is less expensive than yours. How do you handle that? Well, you might come back to them and say, oh, okay, you mind me asking, is there any reason you haven't bought from XYZ company? And they might say, well, I'm just doing my due diligence. I want to see what's out there. Okay, well, can I ask you a question? Is there anything they said or did that made you feel that you didn't want to work with them? No, not really. I look confused. Why wouldn't you buy from them then? Well, I want to know why you're $1,500 more than ABC. So now we have the real objection, which isn't why are you so expensive, but it's why are you more expensive than ABC? We've got down to the substance of what's really behind what they originally said, and we can then deal with that issue. So always remember that when you're handling objections, when you handle them in the right way, you're simply responding with a question to dig deeper, to understand what they really mean. There's a difference between what they say and what they mean. You're never going to get the real objection until you dig deeper by asking more questions. So when you're handling objections, remember these three things. What did they actually say? What did they actually mean? And what kind of question can I ask that gets them to explain to me what they really mean? Remember, if a prospect says, oh, it's very expensive, they're not saying they don't have the money for that. They simply said it's expensive. They're not saying they don't have enough budget for it. So you need to dig deeper to find out what the real reason behind that statement is. Once you've developed your skills by practicing and using these suggestions, you're going to find that you're going to be much more effective at helping your customers and your prospects to solve their problems. And the other thing that being able to handle these types of statements from your prospects is going to do is position you as an expert. They're going to see you in action as an expert in your field, knowing how to ask the right questions. And that's going to move them to want to do business with a person like you. So you're going to be able to close a lot more deals. Plan ahead. Think about the objections that might be thrown your way when you go into a meeting and prepare to respond in an effective way to them by asking good questions. Thanks for watching this video. Remember to subscribe to my channel, hit the like button and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of my content. And if you'd like help, by all means, reach out to me. You can send me an email to mikeallisoncoaching at gmail.com or send an SMS to 204-806-2977. I'd love to help. Have a great day.